In this video, we will talk about Index Credit Default Swaps, Index CDS. This video will be helpful for candidates who are preparing for the FRM Part 2 exam. Let's begin this video with a quick recap of the mechanics of a simple or let's say single name CDS. Now we know this that a CDS is a contract which can provide us with protection or let's say insurance against the default of a chosen company. In the context of a CDS, this chosen company is referred to as the reference entity and its default is referred to as the credit event. Okay. Now let's say you are an investor and you have bought 100 million face value worth of bonds which are issued by let's say ABC company. Okay. Given the size of this position, you are quite concerned that if ABC company were to default on these bonds, you will be in for a huge loss. What you can do is that you can protect yourself against these losses by entering into a CDS with ABC company as the reference entity. Okay, the size of this CDS, also referred to as the notional amount or notional principal, will be equal to the face value of the bonds which are being insured or protected. And in this case, notional amount is equal to 100 million. And for the CDS, you also need to decide upon what is the horizon for which protection is being bought. If this horizon is 5 years, it means that the maturity of this CDS will also be 5 years. Okay? We then take this 5 year period and we will divide this 5 year period into a number of smaller periods. These smaller periods can be for example monthly, quarterly, 6 monthly or even annual. Let's say we work with quarterly periods. Then you the protection buyer will be required to periodically, that means quarterly, pay to the protection seller this payment which is referred to as the spread payment or also you can call it the premium payment. Okay. Now to calculate this spread payment, what you would need is this number which is called the credit default swap spread. Okay. This number is fixed at the beginning or initiation of this CDS and this number is fixed in such a way so that this CDS becomes equally fair to both the protection buyer which is you and your counterparty which is the protection seller. Okay, let's say for ABC company for a period of 5 years this CDS spread is 50 basis points. Okay, if this were to be the case, your spread payment for any quarterly period would turn out to be equal to 100 million, this times 50 basis points, this times this period in years, which is 0.25. You can check this that your spread payment would turn out to be $125,000. Okay, very quickly, let me lay out for you the cash flows in this CDS from the perspective of you, the protection buyer. Okay? For any given period over which the default of ABC company does not happen, for such a period, at the end of the period, you will be required to pay to the protection seller this spread payment of $125,000. Okay? And this CDS moves on to the next period. If during any given period, ABC company were to indeed default, then in such a period, you will be required to pay a portion or a prorated amount of this spread payment, which is called the accrual spread. Okay, this amount is basically calculated taking into account the time period between the beginning of the period and the time at which the default happened. Okay, now since the default of ABC company happens in such a period, in this case the protection seller has to step in and pay to you the notional principal, the notional amount, which in this case is 100 million. 
in return you will deliver to the protection seller bonds of face value equal to the notional amount okay now these bonds are coming from an an issuer which is abc company which has just now defaulted these bonds will have a market value that is a fraction of the face value okay if i were to write down this market value to be equal to let's say some recovery amount this times the notional amount then on net net basis the protection seller is basically paying you notional amount minus recovery times notional amount which is nothing but notional amount times 1 minus recovery okay and after this exchange happens this cds stops okay so to summarize what's going on here the protection buyer which is you will periodically pay to the protection seller the spread payments these payments continue till the maturity of the cds if default of your reference entity which is abc company does not happen these spread payments continue till the default date if the default of abc company does happen okay in return you the protection buyer will receive the right to sell the defaulted bonds of abc company to the protection seller in return for an amount which is equal to the notional principal okay this is how a simple single name credit default swap works now let's come to a credit index or let's say index credit default swap now when i say credit index you should think of a credit index to be essentially a credit default swap which is based not on a single name but rather is based on a basket of names okay so basically to create a credit index we are pulling together a pre-specified number of reference names based on a pre-specified set of criteria okay and these reference names which underlie our credit index these are referred to as the reference portfolio okay now the key attraction of a credit index is that it allows you to buy protection or sell protection on all these reference names using a single transaction okay now very quickly let's take a look at a couple of popular examples of credit indices the first example is the cdx na ig index in this index you will have 125 reference names which are pulled out from this universe of names or companies in north america and here we are talking about 125 names which enjoy topmost liquidity and these are names which have investment grade credit ratings okay then another example is the itrax europe index again 125 names again these are names which have investment grade ratings and these are names which are pulled out from the european region okay now please understand this that we are associating a credit index with a cds right and since a cds has a maturity associated with it a credit index also has a maturity associated with it okay so i can talk about the cdx naig one year index i can talk about the cdx naig five year index i can talk about let's say cdx naig 10 year index okay let's take the cdx naig five year index as our example what i have done here is that i have let's say tabulated all the 125 names which enter this index and alongside in this column let's say i have tabulated the cds spreads for each individual name in this reference portfolio which we have here since we are referring to the five year index each of these individual cds spreads will also be five year spreads okay now 
Let's do this. Let's use this CDXNA 5 year index, CDXNA IG 5 year index, and let's see how we can use this index to buy protection for a total of 100 million face value of bonds and for a 5 year horizon, 5 year period. Okay. Now, the first thing which I want you to observe and note is that when we talk about 100 million total face value of bonds, then such a credit index is equal weighted when it comes to the notional. Purchasing 100 million worth of protection would mean that for every name in our reference portfolio, and here we have 125 of them, every name will get an equal notional amount allocated to it. So if our total is 100 million and there are 125 names here, that means for every name, for every company, we will have a notional amount of 800,000. Okay, so 100 million divided by 125. Okay, then if I were to be a protection buyer in such a CDS, which is a five-year CDS with notional amount of 100 million, for me to be able to calculate my periodic spread payments, I would need this number. Remember, the CDS spread. Please understand this, that a credit index has associated with it its own index credit spread. Let's denote it by capital I. Given that we've already said this, that our credit index is equal weighted when it comes to the notional for each of these reference names, a quick and rough way to arrive at this index spread is to calculate an equal weighted average of the individual or single name CDS spreads for all these reference names in our reference portfolio. Okay, this is how I'll do this calculation. But please note this, that in practice, our index spread comes out to be a number which is less than this equal weighted average. Okay, and how much our index spread deviates from this equal weighted average depends on the diversity of the names which we have included in our reference portfolio. Okay, let's say I were to go to the market and observe what is the index spread which is being quoted and let's say the quotes look something like this. 65 basis points is my bid quote, 66 basis points is my ask quote. If I am entering into my 5-year CDS for this particular index as a protection buyer, this is the quote which will apply to me. If I am entering into this CDS as a protection seller, this is the quote which will apply to me. Okay, so I am here as a protection buyer. 66 basis points is what applies to me. Since I am working with a 100 million notional amount, it means that the total cost of insuring this reference portfolio, which contains 125 names in it, would turn out to be equal to 66 basis points, this times 100 million. And I am talking about an annual cost here. Okay, so it turns out to be $660,000 per annum. Since I am working with 125 companies here, 660K divided by 125 means that for every company in my portfolio, I am looking at a cost of $5280 per annum. Okay, this is what my spread payment will be calculated as when this CDS begins. Okay, now what if during any given period going forward in time, any of these index constituents, any of these reference names were to default. For example, let's say in the second period, let's say this fourth constituent were to default. Now when this happens, look at this cash flow diagram, I will be receiving from the protection seller the notional principal associated with this name. And I know this, that the notional principal will be equal to $800,000. In return, I will have to deliver to the protection seller bonds 
which are issued by this reference name and which have a face value equal to $800,000. Okay, from that period onwards, this name will be removed from the index and going forward in time, the index will continue to trade but it will have one less name. Okay, it will have only 124 names and not the original 125. Okay, so basically I can say this that at any given point in time, the annual payment which I am paying as my cost of protection will be equal to 66 basis points. This times the notional amount per company that is 800,000. This times the number of companies, the number of names in my reference portfolio which are still surviving. This will be my annual payment at any given point in time during the life of this CDS. The notional amount at any given point in time would simply be equal to the number of names which are surviving, that divided by 125 which was the original, this times the total notional amount which I began with and that was 100 million. Okay, this is how an index credit default swap works. As we've just now described, this index credit default swap can be used to buy or sell protection on multiple reference names using a single transaction.